All right, folks, let's discuss lower extremity DVT ultrasound. I am Kat Ogle, Assistant Professor of Emergency Medicine at the George Washington University. As always, I like to start with the learning objectives. So we're going to talk about the indications for lower extremity ultrasound. We're going to talk about the anatomy, which is pertinent to this exam, how to actually complete the study, and some of the challenges you may encounter. So the first thing we have to talk about is what the clinical indications are. So one of the things that you may see is you may have a patient with unilateral lower extremity swelling. Additionally, if your patient has chest pain or shortness of breath, or if they are unexplained hypotensive, then this may be a study that you want to pursue. So when we talk about the anatomy, there's some key anatomy in the proximal portion of the leg and some key anatomy in the mid portion of the leg. So in the proximal portion of the leg, you're looking mostly at your common femoral vein, your sapho-femoral junction, and what used to be known as the superficial femoral vein, but it's now just the femoral vein. These structures will be just distal to the inguinal crease, and to pair them with the arteries, the arteries that you'll also see in these areas are the common femoral artery, the profunda femoris artery, and the femoral artery. Now, as you migrate down the leg, you will run into the popliteal vein, peroneal, posterior tibial, and anterior tibial veins. Now, when you pair those with the arteries, you find the popliteal, peroneal, posterior tibial, and anterior tibial arteries. When it comes to positioning your patient for this procedure, if the patient is able to, you want them to bend their hip, sort of flex their hip, and then externally rotate it. This enables you to have easy access to the blood vessels as they traverse the femur, as they migrate down the leg. And it also enables you to get into the femoral crease or the inguinal crease pretty easily. You will also want to tuck the sheet sort of into their groin area to protect their genitals and preserve their privacy. Now with regard to the anatomy, the most proximal view that you're gonna to try to get is actually the common femoral vein and artery. You should remember that the arteries will have a thicker, more hyperechoic wall, which will be less compressible. So when you look at the top image with no compression, they're both sort of semicircular structures. And on the bottom, when you actually have compression, you lose the vein almost entirely. I like to think of the vein as winking at you. So if you have a winking vein, that means that you do not have any space occupying structure inside the blood vessel, such as a DVT. Now, the next spot you're going to find is the saphenofemoral junction, and this is an area of turbulence, and this is also an area which can be quite concerning for the development of a DVT, so it's really important for you to be able to not only visualize this portion, but provide some compression on this portion as well. So again, on the top, you see the artery and then the deep femoral vein and the saphenofemoral junction and then you see the compression on the bottom. Now, as you migrate down the leg, you may find that the vein traverses behind the artery. And so when you compress, the artery will remain full and plump and pulsatile, and the vein underneath the artery will compress. You can also see in the top image that the saphenous vein is migrating farther away from the artery and vein on the right-hand side of the screen. And again, as you compress these, you should get complete and total compression of the veins, and they should the anterior wall and the posterior wall should meet. Now, as you migrate down the leg, you're probably also going to have to move your probe, sort of orient your probe more medially. And when you do that, you're going to need to rock the probe such that the probe face is going to create a sandwich between the skin and the femur, and the center part of the sandwich is actually your blood vessels. This allows you to have two firm structures on either side of the blood vessel, which will give you some compression. Now, if for some reason you're unable to use the patient's femur as a branch point or sort of compression point, you can always use your non-probe hand on the back of the patient's thigh and provide some gentle upward pressure, which will displace the tissue and again, give you a more firm structure to compress the blood vessel. 
When it comes to deciding what a positive study is, this is really an exam in which you are trying to figure out if there is a space occupying lesion inside the blood vessel. So this is not about really seeing color flow going through the blood vessel, although you can do that if you're sort of trying to determine if someone has an occlusive clot. But really what we're trying to see is there's something that is preventing full compression of the vein. Because if there's something preventing full compression of the vein, then that is very worrisome for a blood clot. The other piece of um, information that you should keep in mind, and this comes from personal experience, if you have to put so much pressure on the patient to completely collapse their artery and you're still having a hard time collapsing their vein, this should be a sign to you that there is something in the vein that's not supposed to be there. As I mentioned before, make sure that the patient has their leg externally rotated if they can tolerate that. And if they flex a little bit at the hip, it will make it a little bit easier to access these blood vessels. As mentioned previously as well, the saphenofemoral junction is an absolutely essential portion of this. Now, some of the recent research will discuss the possibility of doing just two-point compression versus three-point compression. And in our shop, we recommend that you actually go down about a probe's width for each level of compression. Do graded compression down the entire blood vessel until you essentially lose it behind the femur. Once you lose it behind the femur, you basically pick up the probe, migrate it behind the popliteal fossa, and look for your popliteal vessels. You've got to see that distal superficial femoral vein, and in some cases it will be difficult to visualize, so you might have to adjust your depth and your gain just slightly. And if you ever lose the blood vessel, just go back proximal and try to locate yourself where you were, sort of go back on the uh, yellow brick road, if you will. If you cannot compress it, again, think about whether or not you have a firm base to compress it against. So are you compressing against the femur? Are you compressing against the hand? Because if you try to push the pressure of your probe down onto the patient's leg towards the bed, you may not get enough of that sandwich pressure to be able to compress the vein. Now let's show some images. This is an example of the common femoral artery on the far left side of the screen, the common femoral vein, and then the greater saphenous vein taking off. So this is your saphenofemoral junction, and there it is labeled for you. Now, as far as what this is going to look like in a live action view as you migrate down the leg, you're going to get a bifurcation of the common femoral artery and vein as you migrate down. And as I mentioned before, we used to call it the superficial femoral vein, but now it's just called the femoral vein because this is a misnomer that we were finding that there were some folks that saw that if there was a blood clot in the superficial femoral vein, then it was not concerning for a DVT when in fact the superficial femoral vein is actually a deep vein. Here's another example of the superficial femoral vein. And this demonstrates for you that as you migrate down the leg, the vein may go behind the artery. And this is also an important thing when you're reviewing images, because if the vein is deep to the artery, then you're probably still up in the proximal portion of the thigh. Whereas on the next image, if the vein is on top of the artery, then you are in the popliteal fossa. You can think of it as pop on top. Now, sometimes there are structures that you will encounter as you go down the leg, which may be concerning for an echogenic focus. And you might think, oh, geez, do I have a blood clot here? This is actually a lymph node. And in some of your patients who are coming in with these lower extremity swelling complaints, they might have swollen lymph nodes. The way to tell the difference here is that you're going to put color flow over the structure itself. And if you see sort of branching in the center of the structure that looks like a micro kidney, then this is more suggestive of a lymph node. The other thing to keep in mind is that a lymph node will appear and disappear, and it will not be continuous all the way down the leg. Now, when you look at this image, you can actually see a couple of things. There is an echogenic area 
that is non-compressible right in here. There's actually two parts of that that are non-compressible. And then your artery to the left-hand side is actually also not compressible. And then as you migrate down, that echogenic focus becomes even more prominent. It almost looks like a, a sandy snowman standing on top of himself. Now in this image, you see a blood vessel on the right-hand side, which is minimally compressible. And then you see a hypoechoic circle deep to that. So this is, again, one of your femoral, ve femoral veins, sort of in the mid-thigh, because it's behind the artery. So this is concerning for a DVT. Now here, again, you've got compression, but it does take quite a bit of compression to actually get that vein to collapse. And when you squish really hard, you see the artery is actually starting to compress here. And so if you have to put that much pressure on, it becomes concerning. And this is the area that we're looking at here, just to the right of that artery. Now in this next image, this is actually in the popliteal fossa. So there's a really plump blood vessel on top and then a not so plump blood vessel, just superficial, or sorry, deep to that. And in this situation, this patient actually has a popliteal DVT. Here's another example of the popliteal DVT where you can actually see the trifurcation into the peroneal and anterior tibial veins. Once again, artery on the right-hand side and big blood clot in the vein underneath the artery. So this is a superficial femoral or femoral vein. So when it comes to the challenges, the pitfalls of this exam, if there is a lot of discomfort in the extremity or a lot of tension in the extremity due to edema, it can be a little bit more challenging to visualize those blood vessels. Similarly, if the patient has a lot of tension in the groin or a lot of tension behind the popliteal fossa, those ligaments themselves can actually hinder your ability to provide adequate compression to demonstrate that there's no DVT in the vein. The other thing is, as I mentioned previously, you've got to get that saphofemoral junction. And the other sort of caveat or limitation to this is if you have an iliofemoral DVT, it's up in the abdomen and it's a little bit harder to see. And so you can definitely miss that. Similarly, as you migrate down the leg, because the saphenous vein, after it comes off of the saphofemoral junction, it travels more medially and then even posterior in some cases. If you had a clot in the saphenous vein, you might miss it. The other thing is you can accidentally overcompress. And if you're overcompressing, it's going to be really challenging to see the veins. All right. So again, as a reminder, indications for this are usually when you have lower extremity swelling, when your patient has chest pain, when they have shortness of breath, when they're unexplained hypotensive, and that's basically it.